everyone, it's Taya Aino here for DW Travel reporting from Lagos, Nigeria. I am currently in the center of the city at a place called Marina and this place is home to one of the biggest markets in Nigeria. Today I'm going to be taking you around Lagos and showing you some of the nicest spots and best places to visit if you're coming to Lagos, Nigeria for the first time. So come along with me while I show you the diversity of Lagos, Nigeria. Lagos is the most popular city in Nigeria and in Africa. It has over 20 million people from more than 250 ethnic groups. It is also the economic and financial hub of Nigeria. It is a city filled with a vibrant culture, lifestyle and it has many amazing locations that you should definitely check out if you're traveling down here for the first time. First off, let's check out the Lekki Arts and Craft Market which is tucked away in one corner of the Lekki Ekpe Expressway. It is one of the biggest arts and craft markets in Nigeria with a variety of professionally made African artworks, crafts, paintings and woodworks. So guys, we're currently in the arts market and I'm learning how to make a... This is a tree, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm learning how to make a tree. They have a lot of paintings, carvings. You can also weave baskets. If you're somebody who loves art and craft, this is where you should definitely come to to check it out. One of the cool things about this place is that there are multiple tribes in this place. All of them can be found here as artisans. Everybody is making different types of things. There are people making artworks, there are people making paintings, even foreigners. Some people from Mali, Senegal and some other people from other countries can also be found here. So this place is very diverse and is also rich in culture. So guys, this is one of the music instruments you can get here. And this shop has a lot of them. How long does this one take you to make? This one, like for eight days. To make just this one? Uh, this one, only one. Wow. Eight days. And all this is carved from a single piece of wood? Yes. The Lekki Art Market has a wide variety of African arts, craft and fashion accessories and it is one of the most touristy places to experience if you are visiting Lagos for the first time. This is one of the art shops that you can buy artworks from Lekki Art Market. You can see a lot of paintings on the walls. This is made from fingernails, can you imagine? If you look at it from far, you wouldn't know, but if you come closer, you see that it's made from women's fingernails. This is a painting of a place called Makoko in Lagos. It has houses and they are on stilts over a lagoon. Is this Akaris, this was like a means of exchange. It was used before paper money was invented. This was what people used to pay for goods and services. Check out this textile outfit. You can use this to sew like a cloth or an it's outfit. So soft, oh yeah, like this one that is wearing. <laughs> I think I need one. <laughs> Next up is LCC which stands for Lekki Conservation Center. This is the last reserved portion in the ever busy city of Lagos. This land was established in 1990 to serve as a biodiversity conservation icon and environmental educational center. So guys, I'm currently at Lekki Conservation Center and I'm on the walkway. This leads to a canopy walk. There's so much water here and you have to be careful not to fall. Let's go in and see what this place has to offer. This is a sit-out area in case you're tired and you've been working for a very long time. So guys, this is the beginning of the first canopy walk on this side and we're going to be climbing on it. It's the longest canopy walk in Africa. The length is 401 meters at the highest point of 22.5 meters above the sea level. Wow. There are seven sections on the bridge before we get to the end. The bridge is not stable, it wobbles. The shaking is deliberate. It's just designed to test your adventure spirit. Whew. I just climbed the second one and see guys, I'm already sweating. We're currently above a couple trees, but there's still the highest point there. That one is still in front. So let's keep going. Ah. Is this the highest point? Yes. This okay. Is the highest point. So guys, we're currently at the highest point. We're 22.5 meters above the sea level. Oh, wow, that's high. That point is called the observation tower. So when you look towards this direction, you can see the Atlantic Ocean. Oh so yeah, you true. See different indigenous species of trees. Yes. Let's check out these monkeys. Hi, hello. Can you imagine I see the note? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so guys, now we've gotten to the highest point and now we are descending. The cool part about this place is you have to just keep walking carefully. <laughs> yeah. There's a board here where people can sign their names. I don't have a marker, but I've signed my name. You can see a lot of people signing their names. What's the most interesting thing about Lekki Conservation Center? Lekki Conservation Center is where you get more information about nature. And when you do this first thing in the morning, where the weather is still very calm, since it's not a zoo, yeah. it's a nature reserve, you get to see different species of animals. Animals. Like crocodiles, you see snakes, you see monkeys, you hmm. see antelopes. 
You see pangolins. Oh really? Oh, all in this place? All in this place. This is the resting point after you've done the whole tour of the long ass canopy walk. So there are crocodiles in this mango, but we've not spotted anyone yet because I'm scared of crocodiles. So guys, after the very long canopy walk, this is where you come to chill. This is the family park. You can see a lot of people cooking and making stuff at the back. This place can also serve as a picnic spot if you brought your own food and you want to just chill with your family and friends here. Thank you. So guys, this is suya. This is Nigerian suya. It's made from roasted beef with oil all over it. I won't buy oil. Mm. I swear. Yummy. There's also a tree house which is a 21 meter high tree platform where one can get a panoramic view of the picnic area, reserve, visitor center and children's playground amongst the trees. Ooh, I'm really tired right now but you know, as an adrenaline junkie. Let's go. This is really high up. <laughs> you have to be careful so that you don't lose your step. This is where I'm standing and this is where I am very high from the ground, this is where people are. The creation of LCC has helped effort to save different types of animals, reptiles and bed life from extinction. Next up is Takwa Bay which is an artificial sheltered beach located near the Lagos Harbour in Nigeria. Due to its island status, it is only accessible by boats or water taxis. The beach, popular with swimmers and water sports enthusiasts, also has a welcoming resident community. Majority of the residents at Takwa Bay are fishermen, traders, artisans and producers of natural palm oil, palm wine and coconut oil. The beach is remote from the everyday madness of Lagos City, thus giving it a blissful feeling that makes it impossible for visitors to worry about the hustle they left behind. Takwa Bay in its elevating beauty prides itself as a free haven that is not usually noisy or crowded, making it a unique place to have some quiet time with loved ones or a fun get together with friends. The resident community makes their living from tourists who visit the beach and they do what they can to keep it clean. It is one of the best beaches in Lagos and is also home to luxurious beach houses like the Lighthouse Beach House which is named after the old lighthouse that can be found further inland. Last on our list is Badagi, which is a small coastal town located between Lagos and the Seme border in Benin Republic. And today we are headed to a place called Badagi, which is one hour off the coast of Lagos. And for us to get there, obviously we have to go by boat. It has a quiet vibe as it's quite a distance from the center of Lagos. This town on the east side of Lagos was the point of no return for Nigerians who were sold off to Europeans during the transatlantic slave trade which lasted for over 400 years. It is now home to museums and historical artifacts about the Nigerian slave trade. Our first visit is to the slave museum which has most of the ornaments used during the slave trade era. Here you can find some of the chains, cannons and slave cells used for slave trading. Right on the wall, these were some of the European products that were used in exchange for the slave when they arrived. Like if the European give you one umbrella, yeah. you give them 40 human beings as a slave. This one is called Kovlin yoke. They use it to join two slaves together, the police at the ankle or the Okay, to join two slaves yeah, together by the leg. Slave. Can you see that small window there? Yeah. And that's what we provided the ventilation. Imagine 40 able human beings in there for three to four months. This 40 is human beings inside here. Imagine the odor, the heat. Imagine how many human beings because they will have died here. These are the chains they use for the slaves. Yeah, you can see, that's why I say you can see how oh. wish. Are you so they put it? Yeah, yeah, let me yeah. try it. Okay, so just tell the people how you feel. Wow, this is heavy, man. And this is what they wear on their neck, yeah, yeah, all yeah. true? Yes, there will be, it should be in a single yeah. file, you know, in a straight road. This is another neck, another neck. It could have been like hundred of wow, them. Wow, man, guys, this is very heavy. It was really shocking to learn that many Nigerians were made to live like this against their will. It's hard to imagine how you must have felt and it was a very emotional experience being here and hearing about their stories. Balagi is also home to the first story building in Nigeria which has been standing for over 200 years. There's the room of the first African picture of Samuel Ajayi Crowder. Look at the hangar. That's where they used to hang their robes then. This is the first English Bible. First English Bible. Which is 169 years old. And this one is 167 years old. The first story building was built in 1845. The structure was occupied by Samuel Ajayi Crowder, the first African CMS bishop when he undertook the translation of the Holy Bible from English to Yoruba. He was taken as a slave at 13 and on his return lived in this very building. It doubles as a small museum paying homage to Anglican missionaries and the first teacher in Nigeria. 
Currently, it contains Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder's Yoruba Bible and the first English Bible brought to Nigeria by CMS missionaries. This is one side of Balagui. This is the side where we saw the first story building and we also saw the barracons, which is where the slaves were kept. So now we're going to the point of no return. And for us to do that, we have to cross over this lagoon here and get to the other side. That's where we see the point of no return. The point of no return is a point where once slaves get to, they can't come back anymore. The point of no return is the final spot where slaves leave the shores of Lagos, Nigeria, never to return. This is the route they walk yeah. for? This same place? Yeah, where we are walking. Wow. Now. By the time the slaves get here, this is where they board the ships that take them all the way to Europe and all those other countries where they have been sold. The building at the point of no return was built in a circular shape to represent the return to Africa. It's a tunnel with multiple windows made to give a great view of the point where the slave ships were docked. The abolition of slave trade in Nigeria started in 1885 and was eventually finalized in 1950. Taking a trip to Baragi was a bittersweet experience. Bitter because walking the same parts of the slaves brought painful feelings to mind. Trying to imagine the pain and suffering they would have gone through was very nerve-wracking. So it's because it was a privilege to travel through time in a town like Baragui and learn about the history of those that came before us. Lagos is so diverse and it has so much history and a vibrant culture. It is an amazing place to live and explore. It's filled with so much energy and a lot of people from different walks of life. One of the most popular scenes Lagosians recite is, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to DW Travel for more videos. Cheers.